I don't think anyone would really welcome disruption. So a lot of these technologies are disruptive. And uh, so I think that everyone is is slowly coming to the realization that that transparency and that openness is creating a better marketplace, a stronger marketplace where the uh, optimizations are are best when it's more transparent and people can make the, their own decision. And so what you're doing with uh, Phil Connect, what we're doing with uh, Brocrete are both examples of things that are are really they're they're rocking the boat a little bit but they're also creating opportunities for um uh, be definitely better customer client solutions the construction industry has been lagging behind when it comes to technology and online collaboration after 20 years in the industry i still see many vendors and suppliers using whiteboards, Excel sheets, and the phone to conduct most of their business. That's why I'm very excited to have here with me today, Ted Matson. Ted has over 30 years experience in the construction industry and has worked with big brand names like LaForge, Mainland Group, and Convest Contracting. Now he's the VP of Sales and Marketing at Brokerit, a real-time order management system for the concrete industry. Ted, you have been in the industry for a while. You started out as a construction manager, plant manager, regional manager, before you moved to a, a marketing and sales role. This is very unique. You have a holistic perspective on the industry over a 30-year timeline. First of all, welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, for the time. Um, so what can you tell us about the gravel, concrete, and fill industry as it operates operates right now in North America? So the, the period of time I've been involved in the industry, it's a... Uh, uh, I don't like to think of myself as that old, but 30 years is a while. And uh, yeah, there's been a, an awful lot of changes. And uh, I think the, the the biggest change that is probably characterizes the the industry over that time period has been a, uh, a couple of trains of thought, but uh, a lot of consolidation is probably one of the, the biggest uh, changes that we've seen. Uh, so in, you know, 20, 30 years ago, the, the concrete aggregates, uh, fill and excavation construction industry was uh, quite fragmented with uh, small family businesses and uh, so a lot of those multi-generational so a lot of there's a lot of construction businesses started in the uh, sort of after the war uh, so there would have been a, a, a grandparent or a father that would have been involved turned over the business to his sons and uh, or even grandsons at some point uh, some of these businesses but they're all family businesses so um, uh, very tightly owned privately owned uh, and most of their financing would have been in uh, commercial loans and uh, not accessing uh, public capital. So there's a lot of uh, multinational players, the Lafarge, Wholesome, uh, uh, Semex, uh, some of those big uh, multinational players came into the market to consolidate. And what they brought was access to capital. So they're publicly traded businesses and were able to access capital that some of these smaller family businesses were not able to. And then along with that was also moved to more vertical integration. So uh, owning more of the value chain. And so a cement business, for example, would be interested in owning the, the limestone quarry that they're using for cement production. And then they, uh, the vertical integration would compel them to own a concrete business as well. Uh, and then with that, an aggregate business. And then when you have an aggregate business, then you have a construction business and a pipe and precast and asphalt paving. So really a, a, a huge, like a consolidation and this uh, vertical integration are probably the, the big things that have happened in the construction industry over the last uh, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally great. I can think of a lot of companies uh, with uh, the same description. Now, has the industry changed with technology, do you think? Immensely, yeah. So one of the uh, uh, stories I like to tell is uh, when I first started uh, 
the whole business was a summer job. I was going to university. I worked as a concrete finisher. And so that's how I started in this whole thing. And when I, so this was, I'm dating myself here. <laughs> 30 years ago was pre cell phone era. So, uh, the foreman would, uh, carry a big bag of, uh, quarters or a peanut butter jar, uh, full of quarters. And the quarters were for going down to the corner store, uh, and finding a pay phone to call the concrete plant and, and ordering, uh, concrete. So, uh, so they, these four, they literally had a big bag of quarters and, uh, they, and it was, you know, I remember the, uh, foreman would be, you know, we're trying to, to finish a pour and you're trying to determine the last 20 meters or whatever you might need, you, you're finishing it up. And so it'd be this measure and then burn down in the truck down to the corner store and drop the quarter in and make a call to the plant. And, uh, and there was no two way communication at all. To go to where we are now and on this part of what I'm working on with uh, uh, Brocrete and you're doing it with uh, Field Connect is a uh, uh, the, the people in the field now have mobile devices that they can manage their business. Uh, Foreman now has an immense amount of, of uh, power in a mobile device so they can order concrete, they can find a fill site, they can find a trucker, um, they can uh, get dispatch uh, information, they can see some of the uh, the, some of these companies have developed apps that show in real time where the, the truck might be. So you'd order a, a load of concrete and you can go on the, on your mobile device in the field and see exactly where that truck is and, and what time you might be coming. So that's, uh, uh, a, a, a pretty dramatic example of, uh, of some technology changes that have happened. So. Mm-hmm. There's also been, uh, I think, a lot of uh, the, the technology changes kind of worked itself into the culture of the business as well. So uh, the um, kind of the tech savvy, uh, digital natives, I guess, the people that are growing up with technology um, are much more prone to uh, being able to do what we're doing right now, to have a video conference and uh, and to uh, work from a mobile device and uh um, there's definitely been a, a move in the culture as well to adopting uh, a more tech savvy culture and the construction industry has moved with that, that tech savvy culture. Mm-hmm. But, but if you compare it to other industries, um, something simple as traveling, for example, I think construction is lagging behind a lot uh, when it comes to technology. And do you know what would be the reason? I, they've come a long way in the last, I think, five years. Um, I would say not 10 years, but maybe the last five years. But I think still it's a lot behind uh, compared to other industries. Yeah, so I think there's a couple of factors that are behind that. Uh, one being, again, the culture. So the um, traditional uh construction culture is a very uh you know it's a hands-on business right so it uh it, it doesn't attract the you know there's people that are attracted to uh law or uh or medicine or you know more cerebral activities and and people that are attracted to the construction industry a lot more tactile uh that worked with their hands and and there's a lot of um uh pride and respect for uh the, you know, the physical strength and and, and working uh, sweating while you work, right? So that's, it's a little bit different than, you know, this, I, I, for someone like myself growing up in the, uh, construction industry, there was, I, I remember even for myself seeing, you know, an accountant's hands and they're, 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 they're writing with a, uh, a pencil all day and they have very, uh, smooth, clean hands, right? And I used to do concrete work and you get literally calluses and your, your hands are clunky. And so a keyboard just doesn't really <laughs> fit with those, the clunky, sweaty hands, right? And, um, and so that's, I think, part of the, the recent technology that the mobile tech uh, is just, it's much more friendly than uh, a, a laptop and keyboard in a dirty, uh, moisture, uh, windy kind of environment. So a lot of the technology has been kind of just like really almost that basic of, of the, uh, the tools and, and uh, uh, devices that are not really up for the rugged environment that a, a construction uh, uh, site might be, as well as sort of the mindset and culture of, of the of the users. And then I think the other big thing is that the industry is very um, it's kind of insular. So you have a lot of um, 
uh, the product, you don't make concrete in, in Toronto and then ship it to uh, Florida, right? So it, it's very, and even here in Vancouver, you don't make concrete in Vancouver and then ship it to Chilliwack. And so the the, the nature of the product and the, the limited mobility you have and the kind of geographic constraints are, are something that uh, kind of uh, it makes it very kind of local and sort of what we do here locally is, is it kind of shuts out the, the bigger picture that, so whatever, some technology got developed in San Francisco isn't all that interesting to somebody that does all of their business in one small community. And, uh, so I think that's, those are probably two of the factors that really have kind of hindered technological development in the construction industry. Yeah, you're right. That's a really good point. Um, and I think it's interesting too that, like you said, like they really the I think I've seen a lot of the stuff that has happened in the last um, uh, you, you may probably five years has been a lot of these mobile devices that really are rugged enough for the for the field. And mm -hmm. I know in the past they, I was involved there. They're issuing uh, laptops for field uh, foremen and superintendents with these kind of ruggedized cases and stuff. And it never really was it was always a little bit. Um, even from just an IT technical management point of view, it was, a, it was a crazy thing to try and maintain some of that infrastructure in the field. And some of the recent technology, the mobile stuff, especially in the last few years, has really facilitated uh, technological innovation in the construction industry. Yeah, yeah. So, um, where do you see that the technology can change the industry in terms of efficiency and productivity? If uh, we were to, you know, go full on, like other industries, uh, where can we see the change? So um, I think it's a couple of different things. Is the everyone's talking about the Internet of Things, and so this is about putting uh, uh, some more sensors and, and data capture in in different environments, uh, kind of unconventional environments. So. Um, there's a, uh, although I guess talk about this, some of the examples later, but the, um, so there's, there's the, uh, internet of things. Um, there's the, uh, kind of the, um, uh, data analytics that come with that. So having, um, uh, you know, more data points to look at and do analysis. And I've been involved with some of that, uh, some of the work I did previously on, on pricing I was taking big data sets of, of pricing and doing some resorts on that and analytics and uh, that sort of stuff that is uh, new and, and quite powerful uh, tools to employ some of that. Um, and I think that there's the real time information that I was talking about earlier, seeing where, you know, a truck might be on a dispatch route. Um, so seeing in real time where things are uh, is a is a big change. And um, uh, so, so some of the some of the things to that. And I think the other one, too, is um, and we can talk about some examples on this but is transparency. So there is uh, kind of more openness and there's a kind of the the, the world in general is more uh, moved to more open source and uh, kind of open technology. And the, the construction industry is not uh, immune or uh, excluded from that to have the opportunity to have more resources, data information uh, available. And I guess it goes back to what we're talking about the um, the the power or the information that a foreman, a site superintendent might have now in the palm of his hand with a mobile device is light years ahead of what even an, an office construction manager might have had uh, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, even drawings, I remember on site, drawings always get wet, muddy, dirty, whatever. But now they all have all the latest drawings, latest revision um on their ipads and they can you know see zoom in see everything uh so which is great um, yeah, well, that's a like that's part of that real time to thing too, and I've seen some of that where the you know drawing or revisions, like you mentioned, and you know in the past I know been on sites where guys are you could get one of the things I used to do would go out and check a job site and see which uh, drawings the superintendent might be working from, and uh, they could be working off drawings that might have been uh, years out of date or or months out of date, and uh, and now that can be pushed into their their iPad or their device. You can the latest drawing is always the one they're yeah. using. Yeah. No, I remember. Well, it's again in real time putting their their notes on. They can so if there's a uh, uh, a change order, or a revision of some sort, or there's some kind of uh, variance that they've done from the drawing, could be noted on the on the uh, right on the on the drawing, and so that sort of document control is uh, 
the, the, that in real time is that's a huge uh, leap forward. Mm -hmm. So slowly um, they're adapting and and they see the the benefit of it. So hopefully this can continue and uh, see the increased productivity and uh, everything else. Yeah. Yeah, there's some really interesting examples of uh, some of these. There's, uh, there's a company called uh, Carbon Cure. And so they're a, um, what they're doing is they're taking CO2, so uh, taking CO2 from the environment and then uh, injecting it into concrete. And uh, there's obviously the environmental uh, benefit of sequestering uh, carbon dioxide, but then there's also some performance enhancements to, they can optimize the, the concrete mixes. So um, it's a really, interesting thing to do and it's uh, again it's very technical so they have a um you know they have a uh, the way it works is they have they put a, a device on the concrete plant and they can they can dose the concrete plant with using uh computer technology and and internet to make sure that they're getting the, the exact correct dose into the concrete and then and then tracking it as well so and then there's another business called uh geotech and they have um uh, sensors, so they're putting uh, their uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, sensors they put in the concrete pour, and it detects the the set time of the concrete, and so it optimizes the, the when they can take forms off and uh, and uh, monitor the progress of the cure. Uh, we were talking about that previously about the uh, cold weather pours, and they can do they can monitor in real time the the condition of the the concrete and and how it's setting. So. And then there's obviously what uh, what you're working on with uh, Phil Connect, and there's the um, you know an example there of of this transparency. You're seeing uh, you know a, again a, a superintendent or a foreman can use his mobile device to find a, a potential excavation material, fill material, and or a, uh, a disposal site. So some of those things are are uh, you know that's an example of some of the transparency that's in there. And then what we're working on with Brocrete as well, which is something that allows again uh, at a, a field level um, a, some, a, a foreman or superintendent can uh, schedule his, his materials order he can uh, uh, be in contact with the plant he can understand what uh, potential delays or changes might happen with his order he can confirm his order he can cancel it he can move it to a different day and uh, so those are you know a number of examples of things that are technology that is uh, rapidly coming into our, our space yeah but you got to think about it. This is going a long way from, you know, going around with a bag of coins to <laughs> make calls. So and yeah, well, that's I, I think about that often with what I'm working on. I think if I the 20 year old me and saw the the bag of quarters and didn't realize that you could have that, I'd be awed by just the mobile device itself and the fact that you could manage the the concrete orders and and uh, in, the, in that detail from that device would be quite uh, would be eye opening from those eyes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, how do you think this? Um, how can we turn this disruptive innovation into a competitive advantage? Um, I mean, companies, how how can they uh, do that? So I think it's would be kind of kidding ourselves to not think it's a, a, a challenge. I think that disruption is, I don't think anyone would really welcome disruption. So a lot of these technologies are disruptive and they're disruptive in that uh, transparency. It's, uh, I think there's some pieces of information that are, are now everyone, you know, you go back to the, even the example of the, the, um, the, so back in the day of the quarters ordering concrete, and uh, you could call, you could call, and make your order, and then the concrete plant they might fiddle with your order, and you get some, you know, they might be an hour late, and you don't really know what's going on. And now, when they're GPS tracking, and you can see, you call up, where's my order? And like, oh, they can, you know, they used to lie on the pad; they could tell you whatever, right, just to keep you happy. Now there's transparency; you like, you, you see that. So, so as a as a supplier, you like, you can't play any games anymore, right? And I think it gets a little more into even like uh, availability, like the stuff you're working on with the fill connect and and some of those excavation opportunities and fill opportunities are things that uh, might have been kind of proprietary advantage in the past mm -hmm. and so a lot of people they, there's a little bit of hesitancy to share that and that's that is disruptive but i think that um 
and I think particularly the, some of the larger businesses are are looking and saying that the the collaborative approach and and really they're 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 working quite actively to uh, be customer focused and and finding the solutions that are best for the customer. And and again, back kind of to the environmental things. If you have a um, you know, if you're a particular supplier of material and the best routing for a, uh, a customer is from a, com- a competitor site, you may let that go there. Uh, it, it helps the customer. You've got, they're going to, they're going to do it for, um, optimization reasons, which usually corresponds with, uh, uh less energy consumption if a truck's running a more efficient route. And, uh, so I think that everyone is, is slowly coming to the realization of that transparency and that openness is creating a better marketplace, a stronger marketplace where the uh, optimizations are are best when it's more transparent and people can make the, their own decision. And so what you're doing with uh, Phil Connect, what we're doing with uh, Brocrete are both examples of things that are are really, they're, they're rocking the boat a little bit, but they're also creating opportunities for um, uh, be- definitely better customer client solutions. So I think that that is uh, something to uh, keep hammering home. And I think the other part of it too is the, um, for what we're doing with Brocrete is uh, um, there's a, uh, um, this transparency and sort of that, uh, the, 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 the mobile technology particularly is, uh, it removes a lot of friction in the sale. So if you're a, a new contractor, you're coming into town and you're, you're trying to establish, uh, uh, you want to get a, a supplier set up. Um, some of this techno, a lot of these technologies are, are with their transparency and openness are, are making it lower friction to, uh, take up, uh, a new supplier or from a supplier's point of view, take on new clients. So I think that there, it, those are points that are sell points for the disruptive things that we're working on that the, um, as much as there is a little bit of, of friction and disruption on it, that in the end, I think that we all benefit from it. And I think, again, I think uh, particularly some of the more uh, thoughtful, uh, the leaders in, in the industry are recognizing that and are, are actually quite supportive of that. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. Well, thank you for joining us today and thank you for insights. Uh, it was great. Um, you can find... Uh, Ted on LinkedIn, uh, Ted Madsen, or visit brokerit.com uh, to download the app. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Madam. Appreciate the opportunity.